Yeah, now it should be fine. Okay, yeah, we can start. Yeah. Just, okay, now we are recording. So uh, first of all, I would like to welcome uh, Dr. Pavel Gura, who is the uh, the uh, head of Quantum AI Foundation in, in Poland and also uh, a board member in, in Q World, uh, and also the, the main founder of, of Q Poland uh, or Quantum Poland, which is a Q cousin of Q World. Uh, it's a great honor and pleasure to have you, and uh, I'm so excited to hear about the applications of quantum annealing to vehicle uh, routing problems. And I think that uh, Professor Ahmed Yunus uh, shares uh, the same uh, the same views with me, and would like to say something to you and also the audience. So, uh, Professor Ahmed. Yes, Karim. Uh, uh, okay. Uh, uh, again, I I'd like to thank you very much. And I have to mention that uh, uh, being with us uh, in, in the Center of Excellence is really a pleasure uh, to us. Uh, and we are looking forward for more cooperation. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. So first of all, thanks for the invitation. Uh, it, it's also a great pleasure and honor for me to give a talk uh, to such a great audience. And uh, yeah, I also believe that uh, we may have more and more opportunities for collaboration, uh, for example, within the keyword initiative. So I will also uh, mention about keywords uh, during this talk, and I can also tell about it uh, later at the end during the Q&A session, if we have time, of course, and if there is an interest. Uh, so uh, yeah, I think I think we can we can officially start. So uh, uh, hello, welcome uh, everyone. Thank you uh, for uh, attending this talk. My name is Pavel Gora. Um, I'm a researcher at the Faculty of Mathematics, Informatics and Mechanics of the University of Warsaw. Uh, as, as Karim said, uh, I'm also a founder and CEO of the Quantum AI Foundation. Uh, it's a foundation aiming to support research, collaboration and education in the domain of uh, artificial intelligence and quantum computing and new technologies in general. But currently we are focusing mostly on quantum comp computing. And for example, we organize meetings, meetups of Warsaw Quantum Computing Group. So I also invite you to, uh, to, to join, uh, to attend our meetups. Uh, as uh, Karim said, I'm also a board member uh, of, of QWERT. So QWERT is an international uh, organization um, in which the, the main goal in, in fact is also to support education and collaboration in the domain of quantum computing. So for example, we prepare together educational materials uh, and, and then we organize local workshops for local groups. Uh, and for example, such local groups can be on the, the country national level, such as Poland or Egypt. So currently we already have 11 Q cousins, uh, such as Q Poland, for example. And if you are interested in forming a similar local group here in Egypt, which may be uh, named Q Egypt, for example, or Q Alexandria, uh, then we also invite you to, uh, uh, to join and to form uh, such a group so we can, we can also collaborate together with NQWERT. Uh, but today uh, I will be talking mostly about the research um, that I've done uh, at the University of Warsaw within, within a research project uh, aiming to, to um, develop algorithms for optimizing the last mile logistics, last mile delivery. And the project was called GLAD, so I'll also tell a bit more about it at the end of my lecture. Uh, and the title of this lecture is The Application of Quantum Annealing to Solving VRP and Its Variance. So at the beginning, I will tell you a bit about uh, quantum annealing. I, I guess that most of you have already heard about it, so that would be just uh, just a brief intro, and uh, and maybe uh, just I will just recall some 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 basic concepts uh, to give you an idea how how does it work. Uh, later, I will tell about uh, one of interesting applications of quantum annealing to the transportation domain, uh, research conducted by uh, scientists from from D-Wave and Volkswagen. And finally, I will present um, the results uh, of the research uh, on solving the vehicle routing problem. So I, I will uh, present the four algorithms that we developed at the University of Warsaw. Uh, so let's let's start from from quantum annealing. So as you probably know, quantum annealing um, is a, a bit different approach to quantum computations than, uh, for example, circuit. Uh, circuit-based uh, models and frameworks such as uh, Qiskit or Forest from Rigetti or Circuit from, from Google. Uh, so uh, the idea of quantum annealing is that we should uh, translate uh, our optimization problem uh, because usually we uh, just apply quantum annealing to solve 
so-called combinatorial optimization problems. Uh, we should translate our optimization problem uh, to the quantum system for which a Hamiltonian, um, the Hamiltonian will correspond uh, to, um, let's say, different uh, solutions of the uh, of the our our optimization problem or uh, different uh, energy states in fact of our quantum system should correspond to different uh, to different potential solutions uh, to our optimization problem uh, such that the, the state with the minimum energy so the, the minimum of the hamiltonian uh, should also correspond uh, to the global minimum uh, or of our optimization problem so at least that's the theoretical idea uh, uh, and uh, uh, in according to uh, the adiabatic theorem, so assuming that we can run uh, computations uh, in an adiabatic uh, process, in an adiabatic system in which there is no um, there is no uh, transfer of energy uh, between our quantum system and the environment, uh, if we start from a given quantum state that is relatively easy to prepare, so it can be, for example, a superposition of uh, all possible quantum states of our quantum system and then we change the strength of a magnetic field uh, slow enough then at the end the final state will be a solution of our problem so by changing the strength of a magnetic field we'll modify uh, the hamiltonian of the corresponding uh, quantum system uh, and when we modify the ma hamiltonian according to this adiabatic theorem at least in theory uh, our quantum system should uh, remain in in the state of the minimum energy that should still correspond at the end uh, to the global minimum of our optimization problem. But in practice, unfortunately, uh, there are some issues with, with this approach because first of all, uh, it's, it's, it's difficult or maybe even impossible to have real adiabatic processes in the, in the real world. So that, that's one thing. Another thing that um, in order to just uh, uh, change the strength of a magnetic field slow enough, uh, the, the time of computation or time of, of such an annealing should be so large that in, in practice it will not be uh, reasonable to, to run such computations. So we'll not get an advantage comparing to classical systems uh, and classical computations. And uh, in fact, many researchers um, currently, even currently, dis disbelieve that quantum annealing may, may bring um, a real progress comparing to, to classical computations. but but we'll see. It hasn't been proven, but it also hasn't been disproven. Uh, as far as I know, it was proven that uh, such adiabatic computations, so in this ideal theoretical model, uh, are polynomially equivalent to quantum computations uh, in circuit-based models. Uh, but in, in, some, in some cases, of course, it's, uh, it might be easier to just run such computations in such an um, quantum annealing or adiabatic uh, quantum computing model. Uh, I mentioned about quantum uh, adiabatic uh, computations and quantum annealing because there are some differences. I told you that in practice we cannot have a real adiabatic process, but it's, instead of that we can just run this uh, the similar procedure, so to modify the strength of a magnetic field, but uh, it will not be guaranteed that we'll end up in a state of a uh, global minimum of the Hamiltonian of the of the state of a minimum energy. So we cannot be sure that it will be a global optimum of our optimization problem, but potentially it can be still quite a good solution. It can be heuristically optimal solution. So, for example, in case of anti-heart problems, we also uh, cannot solve uh, such problems uh, in a large scale for really, real, uh, really large inputs um, in a reasonable time. So usually we just apply some approximation algorithms, some heuristics or meta heuristics to find the so-called uh, suboptimal or heuristically optimal solutions, right? Uh, but anyway, so just to just to summarize, the idea is that uh, we should first prepare a quantum state that is easy to prepare, so it can be a superposition of all possible um, quantum quantum states of our quantum system, and uh, we should have uh, the target uh, quantum uh, quantum system to which our system should evolve uh, while changing the strength of a magnetic field and uh, and the, the second quantum system uh, should be such that the corresponding uh, Hamiltonian uh, should also correspond to um, 
our optimization problem in such a way that the ground state or the state of the minimum energy should correspond to the um, to the global optimum of our optimization problem. So, so, so how to do that, and how we can how we can uh, even uh, do that in practice? Uh, so, uh, here in the first slide, uh, there was uh, there was such a concept as the icing model. So we can see that we mentioned something about the Hamiltonian of, of the corresponding icing model. So, in physics, an icing the icing model is a model of ferromagnetism used in statistical mechani mechanism. Uh, so. Uh, we can imagine that we have uh, uh, we have some atomic spins, uh, and we may have spin up or spin down, and uh, these uh, spins may correspond or states we may correspond to values plus one or minus one, right? So we have some binary variables which may take values plus one or minus one, which correspond to the spins or magnetic dipole moments, uh, and um, then we can um, we may we may express uh, the energy of such a quantum state using a Hamiltonian, which will be in the form of uh, such an icing model. Uh, so we have different relationships between spins represented by couplings and correlations or anti-correlations. And based on that, um, the energy of such a quantum system can be expressed in, in such a form where we have these binary variables, plus one, minus one. We have some coefficients. Uh, and our variables are at most uh, at the power of two, right? So it's uh, some kind of um, quadratic um, polynomial, let's say, of, of many bina binary variables. Uh, and uh, so one, th one interesting thing is that defining the minimum uh, state uh, of a, a non-planar icing formulation is anti hard problem for classical computers. Uh, but it's also interesting that uh, there is also a mathematical formulation which co that corresponds to the icing model. It's called Cubo, quadratic unconstrained binary optimization. Uh, and uh, as you can see, the formulation is very similar. So we have some coefficients and we have some binary variables. This time they just correspond to states one and zero. And again, the variables are uh, at most of the power uh, of two, right? Uh, so now we can think about this function or uh, as uh, yeah, so we, we can we can think about it as a, as a function for which we would like to find a, a minimum. So we would like to find an assignment of, of these binary variables that would minimize the values of our function. And now the whole idea is that when if we can uh, transform our optimization problem to the formulation of QGO, this quantum unconstrained binary optimization, then we can also translate it potentially to the ISYNC model which will color correspond to a specific uh, quantum system that later can be um, annealed uh, in, a, in a quantum uh, machine, such as a machine from, from D-Wave. So it's a simplification, of course, but this is, this is just a gen more or less general idea of how we can do that. And, and of course, these uh, cou couplings between variables should also correspond to to the topology of our um, of, of our quantum system that we that we design and that we annual. OK, so now how to transform uh, our optimization problem into a, such a form? So let's uh, look uh, how to do that on an example. Uh, it's an example based uh, on a research work from scientists from Volkswagen and D-Wave. Uh, I gave a link to, to the paper, uh, which is open source, so we can you can read it. Uh, and I encourage you to do that because it's quite an interesting paper. The title is Traffic Flow Optimization Using a Quantum Annealer. And uh, the quantum annealing was applied for solving um, the problem of uh, optimal fleet, optimal routes assignment, in, in fact. So uh, the idea was that the researchers built a road network. Uh, it was a realistic road network of Beijing in China. Uh, the road network description was taken from the OpenStreetMap service. And uh, the researchers had routes uh, from real GPS data, uh, from real taxis in Beijing, taxis traveling from the city center in Beijing to the airport. Uh, and uh, this data uh, originated from the data set called T-Drive. And for each taxi, for each car, they added uh, two other possible routes, artificial routes, because these were not routes selected by the real taxis, but some two possible options for each taxi, for each vehicle. So for each car, in total, we had three possible options. Uh, so these were the routes between sources and destinations, of course, and uh, the cars may share the road segments. And then there was an interesting 
uh, assumption, which is also a simplification, but uh, it's very important as uh, assumption that the travel time is proportional to the function that is a square of a number of cars on a given route. So if, for example, if we have a road segment and we have 10 cars traveling through this road segment, then the travel time would be, uh, for example, 100. Right. But if we increase uh, the number of cars uh, traveling through a given uh, segment twice, uh, then the travel, the, the total travel time will increase uh, four times. Right. It will be square. Uh, so this is a simplification because, uh, first of all, uh, of course, there is a relation between the traffic density and the num number of cars and the travel time, but it's not exactly um, a linear relation. Uh, and uh, also, mm, we uh, so th this this uh, this assumption is reasonable if we assume that all the cars travel through a given road segment at the same time, right? Because then they generate the density and they generate then we have delays, right? Uh, so, uh, but but in this case, we only know that there might be potentially many cars selecting the same road segment, but not necessarily uh, passing this uh, this segment uh, at the same time, right? Uh, so that's why I said that this is uh, simplification. Uh, but uh, anyway, it's it's still reasonable, right? And and we'll see that thanks to such an assumption, uh, we can. Uh, in, we can define our optimization problem in a really ele elegant way. And now our goal is to minimize the total travel time. So to minimize the, the, the time of travel to all the road segments uh, in the road network. So how to do that? So first of all, there should be some uh, there, sh there should be some constraints. So let's uh, let's first introduce the binary variables Q, I, J, and we can assume that the value of the variable Q, I, J is equal to one uh, if and only if the car i takes root j so we know that for each car i for each taxi i there are three possible routes so uh, exactly one of these three variables should be equal to one and uh, the other two variables corresponding to this this vehicle should be equal to zero uh, and uh, below we have um, we have an equation which just um, um, is a cons we, we can think about it as a constraint that exactly one of these three binary variables for a given car should be equal to one and the rest should be equal to zero, right? Uh, because we want to have uh, each car uh, assigned to exactly one route, not to zero routes, not to two routes, but uh, to exactly one route. So we need such a constraint for, for each car, in fact. Uh, let's also introduce another notation. BS might be a set of these binary variables or the binary variables which are all associated with routes that share the street segment S, right? And then the cost of traveling through uh, uh, this road segment S is according to this assumption that I mentioned that it's a simplification. It's just the square of the sum of cars uh, passing a given road segment because it's it, it's the same, right? So we he, here we just uh, um, sum up all the vi variables corresponding to routes uh, passing through a given road segment, but some of these variables will be assigned to zero because it means that the given car uh, didn't select a specific route, but some variables will be equal to one and it will mean that uh, this car selected this specific route and this, uh, uh, this specific road segment. Uh, so that's why we should, we should uh, uh, after su such, uh, such a summing up, we'll just get the number of cars passing through this road segment and according to our assumption uh, the cost or the, the time of traveling through this road segment is proportional or we can uh, say that it's equal to uh, to the square of this sum and then we can define our objective function that we would like to minimize uh, we just uh, uh, try to sum all the costs of uh, of traveling through all the roads uh, road segments in our road network graph and then we should also include this constraint. Uh, so uh, as you can see, this is the constraint that we had uh, above. So it's this corresponds to. Uh, so the, so we, sh we should as we should assure that uh, this um, this square uh, this square will be equal to zero for all vehicles. Uh, and if if it will be equal to zero, it will mean that each car selected exactly one route, right? And otherwise, it will be uh, the square will be greater than zero. And now when we set the value of the parameter lambda to be large enough, then we can be sure that 
uh, if uh, that any solver, any reasonable solver, solving our optimization problem in which the the objective function is defined in such a way, will try to or will tend to just uh, make uh, this part equal to zero, and uh, and after that try to minimize uh, the the sum of costs that we want to to get that we want to achieve. But uh, if if uh, some of this uh, squares will not be equal to, to, to zero. So that would mean that our constraint will not be satisfied. So at least one car will, will be assigned to more than one root, which is impossible. And then due to the high value of the parameter lambda, it will not be this such a solution, such an assignment of variables will not be found by, found by our solver. And then we can see that, in fact, uh, this is uh, the quadratic uh, binary optimization problem, quadratic unconstrained binary optimization problem, because we have some binary variables and all of them are uh, in a power at most two. Uh, so there, there exists a, such a matrix Q for which we can just also define this objective function in, in, in such a form. Uh, and uh, we know that potentially we can translate it to a quantum uh, system for which it corresponds to, um, uh, to, to the Hamiltonian of, a, of an Ising model. And then we can try to apply this quantum annealing approach. And uh, this is exactly what the researchers from D-Wave uh, did. So they, they run such computations using D-Wave 2X quantum processing unit. And uh, that's the result. So uh, they run computations, they run the annealing for 22 seconds. Uh, and uh, initially, so th that, that was the initial assignment of, of roots. So as you can see, uh, the, the color corresponds to the traffic density and also corresponds to travel times. Uh, so it means that initially in the real world, oh, sorry, in the real world, in some on some road segments, we had traffic jumps, we had large travel times. But after application of such an optimization procedure, it was possible to just distribute the fleet uh, over the whole road network of Beijing and propose potentially better routes. Uh, so we can see that uh, there, there were some points uh, still with, with traffic jumps, but uh, but probably the travel times uh, were, were smaller. Uh, so uh, yeah, and uh, the interesting thing is that yeah, so relatively small number of streets are, are heavily occupied, of course, uh, but an interesting thing is that uh, they were able to achieve such a such a solution in about 22 seconds on this quantum processing unit. Uh, so they had 418 cars only, so of course not all cars traveling in Beijing, uh, three times more logical variables. So the space, the size of a space of possible solutions is astronomical, of course. So we cannot, uh, we cannot just test, we cannot verify all the possible solutions, all the possible root assignments. But potentially we can also try to solve this problem using uh, classical algorithms. And in the original paper of the researchers from D-Wave, there were no comparison with classical algorithms. So we cannot say whether uh, classical algorithms are better or not, or faster or not. Uh, I, I guess that, uh, so, so based on my experience and also experience of other people, I believe that classical algorithms would be probably still able to solve it faster. But uh, uh, the, the idea was uh, of this research was not to just uh, prove a quantum supremacy, but rather to show that uh, we can really solve some real world problems in a very elegant way using quantum annealing and also in a really uh, reasonable time and uh, and also we can get uh, relatively good solutions and that's that's interesting and that may be also motivation inspiration for us for some other researchers and it also inspired me and my research team uh, in the project uh, very glad to solve the so-called vehicle routing problem uh, so in a vehicle routing problem, um, we have a directed graph with non-negative costs assigned to edges. So we can also think about them as uh, costs of uh, times of travel or distances or costs of travel, because that may be a cost of the uh, fuel that should be uh, used in order to just uh, travel through a given uh, edge in a graph, for example. And then, uh, so the vehicle routing problem is a generalization of a traveling salesman problem. So in the traveling salesman problem, we have n selected vertices in the graph, and we can think about them, for example, as our customers that we would like to visit. So we can assume that we have uh, we have an online 
uh, marketplace uh, where our customers can just uh, buy or order some products and then we want to deliver these products from the depot uh, in a reasonable time with relatively low cost. And so now the question is, what's the shortest possible route that visits all, all our customers, all the selected points and returns to the original ver vertex that is a depot? And in a vehicle routing problem, we also have n selected vertices in the graph, which are our customers, but we may also have more than one route and we may have more than one vehicle um, serving our customers. And uh, it's, it's reasonable because if we have a, a large um, online shop, then maybe we may need, for example, 10 or, or 20 or 100 vehicles that are delivering products to our uh, customers, right? So now the question is, what's the optimal with, with minimal cost uh, set of up to M routes, uh, which in total visit all the selected vertices and start and end in the depot. Uh, so I, I said here that up to M because it's possible that uh, in the optimal solution, we'll not need to just use all M uh, vehicles, but maybe uh, only half of them or maybe one third. So uh, we don't have to use all the vehicles. And there are some different, some interesting variants, uh, even more realistic variants of, of the vehicle routing problem. There might be a capacitated vehicle routing problem. So it's a vehicle routing problem with, with bounded, with limited capacities of vehicles. And we may also have the capacitated vehicle routing problem with time windows. Uh, so beside the limited capacities, we can also, uh, we also have time windows assigned to our customers and we just assume uh, that uh, all our uh, customers should be served uh, in a, within a given time window, right? In order for, for a given solution to be um, to be acceptable, right? And uh, so sometimes uh, there might be no uh, acceptable solution. So it's, it's also possible. Uh, and uh, an interesting thing is that all these problems are empty hard. Uh, so all these generalizations can be easily and just um, um, uh, tra transform to transform to a form of, of uh, traveling salesman problem in fact or uh, or we can we can prove that if we can uh, if we can solve any of uh, the variants of vrp then we can also solve the traveling salesman problem in polynomial time um yeah so that that's why all these problems are hard so uh, in practice we usually use uh, heuristics or meta heuristics and later i will also tell about uh, some of such approximation algorithms, but let's try to solve this problem using quantum annealing and using quantum computing. Uh, so uh, to understand our approach, uh, we have to introduce uh, some notations again. Uh, let T be a set of identifiers of our trucks and vehicles. Let V be a set of identifiers of uh, our vertices or nodes in the graph that, uh, that should be visited. And let's also assume that we have a cost of travel from, uh, from any two nodes and uh, that traveling uh, from the same node to the same node cost cost zero so just the cost of staying in the same uh, location the same node uh, is, is zero uh, and here we introduce our binary variables so x with three indices i j k is equal to one if in a given setting so for a given assignment of, of vehicles and routes uh, the vehicle i visits the node j as a cave location on its route and zero otherwise. Uh, OK, so it's not that easy to to imagine how uh, how to do that. So usually people need some time to just uh, uh, have clear, clear understanding and how to think about it. But just to give some observations for each vehicle, I X I N plus one zero is equal to one, which uh, means that the depot is always uh, in a, on a position zero. So we always, each vehicle starts from the depot. Uh, and uh, uh, otherwise for, for smaller indices, because depot was, uh, is the, the index of a depot is M plus one. So for smaller indices, for our customers, uh, the value of the variable X should be equal to zero. So we never start from a given customer. We always start from a depot. And uh, we can also observe that uh, X, uh, so if, uh, if uh, x uh, i n plus 1 uh, l is equal to 1 for some l, uh, which uh, that, that is uh, uh, greater than 0 in this case, 
so if we uh, if if the depot is uh, visited, then we stay with a given car in the depot. So the depot is always the last location on each on each route. Um, all right. So so basically that's that's what the the second observation uh, means. That if um, uh, that for uh, for all uh, for for all all, all other uh, var variables uh, lower than uh, so different different than the depot uh, and and indices um, greater than than the position L uh, the the value of this variable should be zero because we stay in the depot right so that's why only x i n plus one w should be equal to one uh, for w uh, greater than than L so. So once we reach the depot, then we stay there. All right, and now we have a quite complex cubo formulation, or in fact, it's just a part of a cubo formulation. It's just a cost function that we would like to minimize. Uh, so it might be quite difficult to understand it. So I will just try to give you an intuition. I think if you are interested, you would like to just uh, really understand it in, in, in details. Uh, I believe that uh, you may need to spend a bit more Time on just looking on this uh, on this formulation, but let's let's give an intuition. The first component, because here in this sum we have three components. In the first component, uh, we have just a sum of all costs of travels from the depot, so from our uh, first position, first location, to the first visited node. That's why we have the index here, and we sum we have a sum over all uh, possible customers different than the depot. So it's just this, the, the sum of costs of the first sections of each car's route, right? And here we have costs from traveling from the depot. That was our initial location with the index zero to, uh, to our customer, one of the end customers. So that, that's the cost, the sum of costs of, of the first segments on routes of all cars. The second part, the second component is a cost of the last section of a route. So of traveling to the depot. In a special case, when a single car sell, serves all n orders, and only in such a case the component can be greater than zero. So let's. So uh, and the reason is that here we have the value n. So it means that um, the, this component will be different than zero if this variable is equal to to one. So it means that for for a, for one of the n customers, which are different than depots, right? So this is the the index n here. Uh, we visit a given customer as the um, as as the end um, node on our route, right? And, and then we traveled from from this customer to the depot, right? And, and then only for such a case, uh, this this component can be greater than zero. And and the, the the third part is is the the cost of all the remaining uh, comp all the remaining. Uh, uh, road segments, traveling all the remaining road segments for all other uh, cars. Uh, so in fact, we can think that the compound number one and two are just some special, special cases. And and here we just we just have, uh, we just have of um, have costs of uh, we we just have a cost of traveling for each car for each uh, m cars for for each of the m cars, uh, for each uh, um, for each. Um, road segments because we we travel from the location visited as the end to the location visited as n to n1 for all possible ends and for all possible um potential uh, customers i and j and here we just have a cost of traveling from i to j right so i try to explain it but i it's it's possible that in order to really understand that it's correct you should uh, maybe just uh, yeah check it and verify it uh, manually but anyway that's that's our two cubo formulation, or maybe not not the exactly not exactly the, the whole cubo, but only the formulation of our cost function that we would like to minimize because it corresponds to the to the the whole cost of traveling through a given uh, um, through a given road network for all all cars. So the cost of serving all the customers, but but probably we should also include some constraints. So in order to include the constraints, we should. Uh, Let's let's think about such a relatively simple binary function, right? So we can observe that this is a binary function of n variables, and we can easily observe that the minimum value of this function is equal to minus one, and uh, we can just achieve 
uh, this minimum um, value only if exactly one of these n binary variables is equal to one and the rest of the variables are equal to zero, right? So that's the only case when when we can achieve the, the minimum. And now let's introduce uh, the constraints. So uh, the first part, so the first part corresponds to the constraint. Uh, so in fact, we, we would like to have this uh, this part Q equal to zero, right? So I I didn't write it uh, on the slide, but but uh, just just to just to um, maybe give you what exactly you would like to achieve, you will uh, you will see it on the next slide. But we would like to have uh, this constraint equal to zero because uh, equaling this constraint to zero will imply that um, this component uh, is is uh, equal to or maybe not exactly equal to, to zero but to be uh, equal to minus one in fact so we want this component to be minimal because uh, in such a case if this component is minimal uh, we'll be sure that uh, exactly um, that each delivery is served by exactly one vehicle, right? Because here we have a sum um, for for all our n customers and deliveries, and we consider all possible vehicles and all possible uh, indices on on our route for a, for a given uh, for a given vehicle, right? And uh, minimizing. And this the value of function a would mean that exactly one of these variables should be equal to zero, right? And that would mean that each delivery, each of these car deliveries is served by exactly one vehicle and exactly once, right? And then the second part, so minimizing the second part uh, means that uh, each vehicle is in exactly one place at a given time, right? So only in such a case, because here we make a sum of all over all uh, vehicles and all locate all positions on the route of a given vehicle, and uh, we just have different different locations, different customers, including also depot. And minimizing this part would mean that exactly one of these variable, uh, bi uh, this binary variable, should be equal to one, which means that uh, each uh, each car uh, in 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 a, at a given time should be in exactly one of these n plus one possible locations. And now we have the final cube of formulation. So yes, so first of all, we should correctly set the values of uh, uh, the parameters C and Q such that uh, we should ensure that uh, the that Q reaches the minimum value, right? Q should should reach the minimum value. So then in, in such a case, only in such a case, our constraint uh, that we have to introduce will be satisfied. And uh, ba based on that, assuming that uh, our um, constraints are satisfied, uh, we want to minimize the cost that we introduce, right? So we want to minimize this quite complex, but but also intuitive, I guess, um, a formulation. And again, we can observe that this is a cube of formulation because all our binary variables are uh, at most uh, in a power uh, of two. And uh, we can solve it to using quantum annealing, right? Uh, so uh, that was, in fact, uh, the, the basic cubo formulation. And we call it a full cubo solver because then we can just run uh, some experiments using quantum annealing and get the result. But later we also introduced an improved solver that is called average partition solver. And here we just decrease the number of variables for each vehicle, but assuming that every vehicle serves approximately the same number of orders up to A plus N deliveries, where A is the total number of orders divided by the number of vehicles and L is a parameter called limit radius. So A is just the, the average number of orders per vehicle. And it's a reasonable assumption because in most of the cases uh, in the real world, we also would like to have our fleet uh, to be evenly loaded, right? To have to each car, uh, each car should have uh, more or less the same number of, of orders, for example, right? Uh, but thanks to such an assumption, the number of variables is much lower, which simplifies computation because in general, when we run quantum annealing, we would like to have as few uh, as few qubits uh, and variables as, as possible, because then it would be easier to, in, in most of the cases, maybe not always, but, but usually when you have many variables, we want to simplify our problem. And then we introduced uh, even an improved version uh, of this solver, 
and that was called db scan solver. Uh, so in fact, uh, it was a bit different algorithm because it was a hybrid algorithm which combined a quantum approach with a classical algorithm, a classical clustering algorithm, in fact, that's called recursive db scan. Uh, so first in this approach, we, we run a classical part. We just run this clustering algorithm with limited size of clusters. So in recursive db scan, we, we just try to build uh, clusters in such a way that uh, if uh, any of the remaining points, which are not assigned yet to any of the existing clusters, is close enough to at least one of the uh, one of the clusters, in a, which is so it's close enough means that it's in a given radius, for example, from any of the points of from a given cluster, then we add this point to this cluster, making this cluster larger. Otherwise, we just create uh, another cluster, a new cluster. And then uh, this traveling salesman problem can be solved, uh, for example, using full cubo solver, uh, but also using classical algorithms uh, separately for each uh, cluster. So then we assume that on each cluster we just uh, have one um, one one vehicle, uh, and uh, thanks to this clustering approach, we can be sure that uh, the distances between our customers are, are relatively small. And now if the number of clusters is equal to or lower than the number of vehicles, then the answer is now immediately. And otherwise the solver runs recursively uh, considering clusters as deliveries. So that each cluster contains orders uh, which are served by one after another without leaving the cluster. And uh, we also concluded that by limiting the total sum of weights of deliveries in clusters, this algorithm can solve this capacitated vehicle routing problem uh, if all capacities of vehicles are equal, right? So assuming that uh, we have the, the limited capacities of the vehicles and these capacities are, uh, these limits are equal, which is again reasonable. And then the final, the final approach that is called the solution partitioning solver. So first we run, uh, we run algorithm for solving the traveling salesman says, problem, and we can we can apply, for example, the full cubo solver, or also we can we can. Uh, apply um, any classical algorithms to do that, uh, and uh, in our our algorithm that would be also hybrid algorithm, and uh, the rest after uh, finding um, the solution for TSP will be in fact um, a classical part. Uh, we try to divide uh, this TSP solution into intervals, and to do that we apply dynamic programming formulation. Uh, so basically uh what what we do so we we just uh define how to so we, we have to introduce some variables so again let dpis be the cost of the best solution for orders from d1 to di and for the our given set of vehicles s and uh, here is a uh here's a formula for calculating uh, this cost this minimal cost the cost of the best solution assuming that we have we already have solutions for smaller instances of our problem. So with smaller number of vehicles and potentially also for smaller number of orders, right? And here we also have costs of uh, traveling from I plus one to I, from J plus one to I uh, in this, um, in this uh, solution for TSP basically, right? Uh, but um, the time of computations for the classical algorithm would be exponential and due to the number of potential subsets, but we can also build a heuristic so we can assume that instead of a set of vehicles, we just have a sequence of vehicles. So for example, if our vehicles are indistinguishable, which is in many cases we have the fleet of exactly the same vehicles, then we just can assume that we have a sequence instead of set of vehicles and we just uh, uh, try to attach the vehicles according to this sequence, according to a given order. So now we don't consider all the subsets, but we just consider one subset, right? Uh, and uh, thanks to, we, we can also check that uh, we, if, we, if we have uh, these values, this cost computed for calculated for smaller instances of our problem, then, then we can uh, calculate the cost of the larger instance uh, basically in a constant time uh, thanks to this equation which just uh, so it just depends on uh, on the cost of traveling between um, three points in fact three or four um, yes so uh, and now we can just select random permutations random sequences of vehicles and perform this dynamic programming for each of them all right so now um, going to the end I will I will tell uh, about the results 
And now we wanted we wanted to compare uh, the results of different algorithms, quantum algorithms and classical algorithms on several data sets. So for quantum or hybrid algorithms, we run experiments using this D-Wave Sleep platform and two solvers. CuboSolve that was run on a quantum processing unit or on CPU as a simulation of QPU. And we also used a hybrid solver, which was run on QPU and CPU at the same time. And in case of classical algorithms, we tested simulated annealing, B, alg uh, B algorithm, evolution annealing, and evolutionary annealing, and DB scan with simulated annealing. We also prepared several data sets. Uh, Christophides data set is a standard benchmark data set for uh, the CVRP problem, and it's well known and frequently studied by the scientific community. And we also built our own data set uh, based on a realistic road network of Belgium acquired from the OpenStreetMap service. Later, I tell you why we used the uh, road network of Belgium and, and not Poland, for example. Uh, so here is just a description of this Christophides data set. We have different number of vehicles, different capacities, and different number of orders. Uh, and uh, that was in case of our data set, there were also different number of, of orders ranging from uh, one or two orders, even up to 200 orders for largest instances. And here are our results. So uh, basically we figure out relatively quickly that even on our smallest instances, uh, the Cubo solver is not able to find uh, good solutions for more than one vehicle, in fact, for most of the use cases. So uh, we try to run uh, our solver on the simulator using CPU or using the, the hybrid solver. And the, uh, the hybrid solver was able to find quite, quite good uh, solutions, right, in, in our case. Uh, so later we, we focused mostly on, on, on hybrid solvers and, and CPU. Uh, we also run experiments for larger instances, uh, and we also observe that, for example, this average partitioning solver uh, can find uh, better solutions than the first solver that was full cubo solver. And later, um, the, we observed that this DBSCAN solver, that was our third uh, solver, third approach, uh, also was, was able to improve the results in case of big instances, of the biggest instances. Uh, and um, when we compared this DBSCAN solver with the solution partitioning solver, so our last uh, final, final solver, we also observed that SPS um, usually can, can find uh, better solutions than DBSS. Uh, so at the end, we compare the solution partitioning solver with several classical algorithms, and uh, on our artificial artificially generated data set, but based on real world ne road network description, uh, we observe that uh, even the, our best uh, solver, this SPS solution partitioning solver, is not able to find uh, solutions that would be um, comparable with with best classical algorithms, for example, with evolutionary annealing. Um, but later when we run experiments on this Christophides data set that is a standard benchmark, we observe that uh, this SPS is able to find comparable results, comparable at least to evolutionary annealing or DBSCAN solver um, and D D D or DBSCAN uh, algorithm with, um, with, with annealing as well. Uh, and in some cases, so comparing to simulated annealing, the results are even better, right? So, so our hybrid, uh, our hybrid algorithm was, was able to find better results than than another uh, classical algorithm, fully classical algorithm that was published in a good scientific paper. In fact, uh, so that was interesting. But but uh, the conclusions are as follows. So first of all, as I said, it doesn't make sense to run experiments on QPU for large test cases because. Uh, QPU were, were not, was not able to, to just find good solutions, but we should be aware that recently D-Wave uh, released uh, a newer version of their uh, quantum annealing machine uh, that's called Advantage. So they have uh, more than four, two and a half more, uh, so about two and a half more uh, qubits, and there are also different topologies of qubits. Uh, so maybe it would be reasonable to run these experiments on Advantage as well. Uh, SPS, the solution partitioning solver run on CPU, gave the best results among quantum algorithms. Uh, but uh, we also compared uh, this SPS with some classical metaheuristics, which are well known in the scientific literature. And it usually gives uh, a bit worse results, but sometimes the result might be better or comparable. If you are interested, I also provide a link to the uh, GitHub repository where we have our codes, so we can also 
try to play with the code and, and try to run these experiments uh, on the device machine. Uh, as for the future plans, we want to develop this algorithm further in order to solve the capacity vehicle routing problem with time windows and maybe also some other variants of ERP and to investigate for which scenarios the hybrid algorithms give the best results comparing to classical algorithms. So in other words, for which scenarios we may potentially expect some advantages after applying quantum algorithms. And of course, we would like to investigate the algorithms solving CVRP using circuit-based quantum computers and not only quantum annealing algorithms. Uh, so I, I mentioned that this algorithm uh, or uh, this work was, uh, the research work was done within a, GLA, a GLAD project, Green Last May Delivery. Uh, we collaborated um, within this project with our partners, Colored Group from Belgium, uh, that is a retail company from Belgium. That's the reason why we use the road network of Belgium, from the University of Cambridge and, and with Technion, right? Uh, and also, if you are interested, you can find the details in a research paper that we published uh, in 2020 at the ICCS conference. So here is the title, link to the, to the paper uh, and all the bibliography data. So as you can see, there are several uh, people working on this uh, on this research. And if you want to learn more, here are also some useful links to mostly to D-Wave's uh, resources. All right, thank you for your attention. It looks that we still have some time for questions. So I will be happy to answer if there are any. Thank you very much. Thank you so Thank much you for so your much time and your, and, your, uh, uh, and, 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 and the presentation. Presentation. Um, um, I, 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 there, there is like some echo. Can, can, can you please mute, mute, mute your mic? Uh, yes, I can. I can try to mute myself, but probably I will okay. have to. Uh, just stop sharing full screen. Mm -hmm. uh, otherwise, let me just. OK. OK, uh, actually, th there is one uh, question uh, in the chat here. The question says that uh, is this code open sourced on, on uh, GitHub? Uh, yes, yes, it's it's open source. I guess it's uh, a mighty license, so you can you can really use it. And of course, if you are you're also interested, feel free to, to contact me because, uh, as I said, we, we have some plans for, for this future research as well. So potentially some of you can join uh, and uh, we can run some new experiments uh, or extend this code even further. That is perfect. That is perfect. Um, actually, uh, I have a small question for you. Uh, first of all, uh, uh, did you uh, did you use the uh, the biggest uh, graph from from D Wave, right? Uh, probably, All right. So that was I guess that was this uh, Chimera architecture with about two thousand qubits. Mm -hmm. Oh, so the Chimera architecture. Okay. Uh, so uh, how many qubits uh, have you used? Oh. Uh, so for uh, example, just, for yes. example, in the case of three cars, how how many qubits solve the problem? Yes, uh, yes. So that's 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 a reason why one of the reasons why we were not able to just solve it using just st standard QPU. Uh, so in in fact, uh, I'm not sure how it is exactly uh, transformed into uh, into this uh, graph architecture by by D Wave. Uh, mm -hmm. But so so in in general, I'm not sure if if that's that's correct. Uh, we should use at most, for example, 2,000 uh, logical uh, qubits in in this case. I'm not sure. Okay. But but anyway, uh, if we have a single card, then also it also assumes. Uh, so it also depends on the number of customers, right? So basically, mm -hmm. uh, if we have, for example, three or four customers. So if we have three customers. Then for one vehicle, we'll have uh, 24 variables, right? But but then if we have four, four customers, then for one vehicle, we'll have 120 variables, I guess. So as you as you can see, it's uh, it's it's scaling more more or less as uh, or or maybe maybe even even uh, more, I guess. Uh, yeah, there, there might be there might be even more. No, that should that should be a square, I guess, not a factorial, but a square. Uh, square. Yeah, that should be a square. So so no, so it's it, it grows uh, a bit slower, but but still for uh, for four um, for customers, 
uh, we'll have because we should also add a depot, so we'll have 25 variables uh, for six customers, about 49 variables per, per vehicle, of course. Mm -hmm. Right? Okay. But, but uh, I, I'm not sure. Yes, I may, maybe if I can add something, I'm not sure uh, to be honest how exactly because I, I was also not the person running these experiments. Uh, so it was it was run by by one of my students, but mm -hmm. uh, I also heard that D Wave uh, or this D Wave machine is is able to just decompose uh, the the problem if, the, if there are more uh, if there are more binary uh, variables, then the, there are some uh, ways to just optimize the the cube of formulation, I guess. Uh, but I, I'm not sure to to what extent. So that's that's one thing. But if you are interested, I can I can also check it and, and let you know later. Okay, thank you so much for your time and, and, and your great presentation. Uh, I actually learned a lot about this and uh, you, made me, you made me think a lot about uh, quantum annealing one more time. So th right, thank, thank you so you. much for, for your dedication and, and, and your, uh, your great paper. Congratulations. I think that uh, Professor Ahmed Yunus would like to say something to you. So uh, Professor Ahmed. Yes, uh, I would like to thank you very much Paul, for, for being with us today and we are looking forward for more cooperation and we are, we are going to contact you very soon because we have a lot of plans about the Center of Excellence and the Q Egypt. Uh, so I'd like to thank you again very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, yes, I also once again, thanks for uh, the invitation and I all, I'm also looking forward uh, to our future uh, collaboration uh, within QWERT, for example, or, or as I mentioned, I also invite uh, invite you to to join uh, this research because it's 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 still ongoing. Thank you once again. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank you so much. Okay, uh, I'll stop recording right now.